Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're breaking down one of the most crucial parts of any mixing console, the faders. Now, while it may seem like they're just volume sliders, there's actually more to understand here, especially if you want to make fine adjustments to get the best sound possible. Now, by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to read these markings on the faders and how to use them effectively in your mix. So let's jump right into it. First, let's talk about those markings you see on each fader. Now, most people assume that pushing the fader up increases the volume in a straight, predictable way. But that's not exactly the case. Uh, the markings on the fader are not linear, which simply means that the change in volume is not consistent across the entire range. For example, on most mixing console, you see a zero point often referred to as the unity gain. Now, unity gain means that the signal level is exactly as it is coming into the console. It is not boosted and it is not reduced. So from there, from the zero position, you notice markings both above and below zero, usually going up to around plus 10 or plus 12 dB at the top and down to minus infinity at the bottom. This is called a logarithmic scale. If faders were linear, a slight movement would cause a big jump in volume, making it nearly impossible to make fine adjustments. Now, with a logarithmic scale, you mix, you can make small tweaks in the plus 10 and minus 10 dB range without drastically altering the sound, which is essential for a balanced professional mix. So when you're mixing, the ideal range to work in is usually between the minus 10 dB and plus 10 dB. In this range, the fader is sensitive enough for fine tuning, allowing you to make precise volume adjustments without boosting much or cutting too much. Think of it this way. When you're making small changes to a vocal level instrument, Staying in this range helps you find the sweet spot where the sound sits perfectly in the mix. Now, if you're pulling the fader down, say, minus 20 dB or pushing it up to minus 15 dB, minus 15 is not even possible on this mixer, you're working in a zone where the volume changes, the volume changes become more drastic, making it harder to maintain control. All right, now let's talk about how to use faders effectively in a live mix. Here are some practical tips for keeping your mix under control. The first tip is set your gain first. Now, faders are all about making fine adjustments to the volume, but they are not the best tool for setting your initial levels. Use the gain knob um, to actually set the signal level first so that it is strong but not clipping. Then you can then use the fader to actually balance everything uh, or balance the channel with everything else in your mix. There is a proper gain setting procedure and you can find that out in my video about uh, setting gain on the mixing console. There is a link to it in the description. Check it out. Now, tip number two is to keep the faders near unity, which is like the zero dB position whenever possible. Try to keep the faders close to the zero dB mark. This allows you to make precise adjustments, adding or reducing volume in a subtle manner. Now, if you find yourself needing to push a fader far above or below unity, um, just to hear the channel, it might mean you need to revisit your gain setting. Remember, the fader's job is to make small tweaks, not to handle the main volume boost or cut. The third tip is to make small adjustments. Now, if you're mixing live and the vocal sounds a little too quiet, push the fader up just a notch or two. This way, you're not overwhelming the mix, but still making a noticeable change. Now, mixing is often about subtlety. So don't feel like you need big movement on the fader, especially when you consider that a 6 dB boost in an audio signal doubles the perceived loudness of that signal. Now, the fourth tip is use subgroups for larger adjustments. If you need to change the volume of multiple instruments, say an entire drum kit or backing vocals, consider routing them to a subgroup and adjusting that subgroup's fader. This is what I've covered in my video on um, using group in your mix. I'll put that video link in the description. Now, this way you keep the individual channel faders in that ideal range of plus or minus 10 dB, but half control over the entire group's level. It keeps your mix organized and balanced. All right, let's quickly recap these essential tips for using faders effectively. First thing I talked about was set your gain first. So the fader is for fine adjustments, not overall volume. 
And the second thing I talked about was keep feathers close to unity, which is the zero dB position for better control over small changes. Um, the third tip was to make small adjustments in the minus 10 to plus 10 dB range to keep your mix balanced. And finally, use subgroups if you need to adjust multiple channels at once, keeping individual faders in their ideal range. The closer you are to unity, the easier it is to make those subtle tweaks that give your mix a professional edge. Alright, that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos or tips. Also, check out my course on the fundamentals of live audio engineering. The link is in the description and consider signing up for the channel membership for some extra perks and as a way to support this channel. Thank you very much. That's it from me. I'm Kelvin. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.